This video is from the combustion setup for the XDR boiler or volume water heater. We're going to start by showing the three different gas valves that are used in their locations for the adjustments. On non-CSD1 boilers without high and low gas pressure switches, right here is your tap that you can remove and measure incoming gas pressure. On CSD1 boilers, you'll have the butterfly valve pull the plug. Here is where you'll install your barb and you can do your incoming gas pressure reading here. So on the non-CSD1 boilers that don't have high and low gas pressure switches, you can measure incoming gas pressure from right here. Provide the barb, then you can do an incoming gas pressure reading. On the Honeywell valve with CSD1 boilers with high low gas pressure switches, you can get your incoming gas pressure reading here. So on this valve, incoming gas pressure is right here. It states in. Uh, this is a number nine torque bit, and you would loosen that tap, hook up your hose, and get your incoming gas pressure reading. To start, we're gonna power off the boiler. We're gonna remove the upper bezel and put it in the upper position so we can get to the high-low gas pressure switches in the gas valve. So we've installed the two lower screws to raise that bezel up, giving us access inside the cabinet. So here we're going to measure the incoming gas pressure. Now right on the nameplate of the boiler, we have minimum and maximum gas pressures. Our minimum gas pressure is 3.5 inches of water column and maximum is 10.5. If we have Greater than 10.5, shut off the gas supply and correct the incoming gas pressure. So here we're showing about 9.9 .9 inches of gas pressure. Now this is sitting idle, so that's called static pressure. When the boiler is actually operating at high fire, we don't want to see greater than a one inch pressure drop. So I'm going to power the boiler back up and let the display liven up. So from the display, the first thing we'll want to do is log in. So right now we're under the user password. And you need to be under the installer level password. Simply tap on the padlock symbol, type in 17 enter, and we're now on the installer level password. Now also, I like to make sure I've got an elevated set point so we can get runtime. You have a couple options there, but in this example, I'll go to quick start. Go to CH, CH1, choose set point, and I'm going to raise this up to 170 degrees and enter. Save the change. When I go back to the home screen, you'll now see I have a CH1 set point of 170. Now, we do have a message box that appeared, um, and if we click on that message box in this example as a warning for low gas pressure switch, uh, you have a couple of options here. You can go to Service, Digital I.O., and now you'd be able to see if you have multiple. An example of that, I've taken the cover off the low gas pressure switch, and I'm going to reset the gas pressure switch. Now when we come back to the screen up here, you'll see all of my safeties are clear. However, in a brand new startup, you might have a low water cutoff installed, uh, or what have you, and that may be tripped, so reset your low water cutoff. And right down here is our low water cutoff, okay? That is under a cover plate that I've removed for the video. I'm going to come back to our home screen. So we're logged in. I'm going to go to configure. I'm going to go to firing rates. Now here under firing rate, the first thing I like to do is choose timeout. The timeout is if we forget to take this out of override, if you will, 
or manual firing rate, it'll go back to normal operation. Um, so, but this is in seconds. 1,200 seconds is 20 minutes. I like to raise this up or elevate it. 3,600 is one hour. So in my example, I'm going to elevate this to 3,600 seconds, giving us an hour to do combustion testing. And again, if we forget, it'll bring us back to normal operation. The next thing we're going to do is come to enable burner. And we're going to enable this function for the manual firing rate so we can do a combustion test. Next is manual heat demand. So on manual heat demand, I don't have to put a jumper in across TT or wire in a TT enable. I can do it right here. So manual heat demand, I will now choose enable. Now I can go back to my home screen. I now have manual run and I'm actually going through, I'm going to do a pre-purge on the boiler so we can start our combustion testing. So in my example, it was about 30 seconds that we actually lit and we're running, okay? We've got a flame signal here. So the next thing we want to do is go back to firing rate. Now under firing rate, I'm going to choose the firing rate box. And now I can lock this boiler at 10% of modulation or 100. It was defaulted for 100%. If it wasn't, back this out and just type in 100, enter, and that boiler will modulate to 100%. And if I come back to my home screen, right now my actual rate is 98%, and in a minute I will be up to 100%. So when you're at high fire, double check your incoming gas pressure. So we were running around 9.9 inches of water column. Uh, again, we don't want to be greater than a one full inch pressure drop. So that means at full fire, I don't want to be below 8.9 inches of water column. We're going to put an analyzer in your flue. And we're going to check CO2. So here on the analyzer, at high fire or full fire, we're looking for about 8.8% CO2. And at low fire, it's going to be about 8.5. And, and if adjustments need to be made, I'll show you where those adjustments are. Now this boiler is a 399,000 BTU boiler in the training room. Um, we're going to be utilizing a 6 millimeter Allen key for the high fire adjustment. So right in here, I can put my Allen wrench. Counterclockwise increases, clockwise decreases. This is a natural gas boiler, and we're looking for eight. 0.8% CO2, and here you'll see we're running at 9. So I'm going to make an adjustment. So to decrease CO2 on this valve, I'm going to go clockwise. Very small increments. All right, so we've adjusted that down to 8.8% CO2. I'll remove the Allen wrench. And next, we're going to go to low fire. So here I'm going to go back to configuration, back to my firing rate option, firing rate tab, and I'm going to back this out. The low fire is 10% on the XPR boiler or water heater. I'm going to let this boiler modulate back to low fire. I'm going to come back to my home screen to see it. So here I am at 92% and modulating down. So next, Low fire adjustment is under the Torx bit cap right here. This is a number 40's Torx bit. And I'm going to take this cap off for us. And adjustments are made down under this cap for low fire with the number 40's Torx bit. Now looking at the analyzer, high fire for this product was 8.8% CO2 plus or minus 2 tenths and low fire is 8.5. So here I'll make an adjustment for you. So to decrease CO2 at low fire is counterclockwise. To increase is clockwise. So I had made a slight adjustment to get it down to 8.5 and it dropped below that to 8.4 so I'm going to make one more adjustment.
When you're done with your low fire adjustment, make sure you put your cap back on. Now, if you've made any changes, an example of that, I had a set point originally of 140 and I elevated this to 170. I'm going to come back to quick start, choose CH, and bring my set point back to 140. Back to my home screen. Now that we've completed combustion setup, what I recommend is come back to configuration. Go back to your firing rate, come back to burner enable, disable this function because we don't want to be an override. Come back to my home screen. So lastly, we got to get out of the installer level password. So you have two options here. Type in LHS, enter, and that puts us back to the user mode. Or I can literally power off that boiler and power it back on and that will put us back to user mode. If you have any technical questions, please contact the factory at 1-800-900-9276.